Tony Hawk Pro Skater HD really brings back the good old days. What I've got from Robomoto is that they really wanted to capture the first and second games in the series, not just based on the levels, but really the core gameplay, which I feel they did a damn near perfect job. You really have to line up your tricks to land them just right, and making usage of the street style combos is the way to really succeed in this game with the lack of the reaver. In essence, the nostalgia effect is just about right on. But let me get a little more in depth with the gameplay before I go off praising how much it makes me want to listen to some Smash Mouth and play with my Crash Bandicoot action figure. The game is divided into a few main modes, career, free skate, single session, and of course the ever needed multiplayer. Career throws you into the game's seven levels and make you skate around looking for certain collectibles, earning a high score, or doing a specific trick on a certain area. The great thing is that after you complete all those semi-easy goals, the game offers you new goals called projectives. While these don't offer a particularly large increase in difficulty, it is nice to have something else to work for, while all the while unlocking cheats, boards, and new hidden characters. The free skate and single session are pretty self-explanatory, but the online is where the game really gets its replay value. There are four modes which you can take online with up to four total players. Free skate, big head survival, trick attack, and graffiti. We're all pretty familiar with these modes except for maybe the big head survival. In case you've forgotten though, Trick Attack is a score battle, and Graffiti makes you run around the level doing tricks off of different objects in order to claim them. The person with the most object at the end wins. For the Big Head Survival Mode, your head gets larger with time and you need to keep doing tricks in order to survive. Outlast your opponents and you win. The online seems to run fairly smoothly, allowing players to sync before each match starts creates very little noticeable lag. Although there may be some f frame rate issues when all the players are close to one another, you still get to punch your opponents in the face during these online battles, which really is a fun tactic all in itself. However, the lobby system could use some improvement. There is only one host for each room, which usually can run smoothly. However, there are, as all of us gamers know, some complications with that. You may find yourself stuck in a room where all the host wants to do is play Trick Attack at the mall, and while you can leave the room, you may find it difficult to find another room with the seemingly random matchmaking. Also, whenever the host leaves, the room disbands as well. This is common in setups like this, but of course I would really like to see more smooth online navigation experience. However, find yourself a good variable room, and you could be playing for hours. As I said before, the game really captures the nostalgic experience, however that doesn't come without a price. Because the game is in essence over 10 years old, the gameplay mechanics may throw you for a loop. You'll find your, your character being thrown 50 feet after a bail, and oftentimes you misjudge your character's ability to rocket through the sky after leaving a quarter pipe. Some of the largest issues I found were actually more personal, however. The inability to assign manual specialist to a triangle button combo can lead to some devastating results, causing your character to do an actual grab or flip right before he lands, as well as not to be able to control the music. But, let's take a second to talk about the music. It's completely awesome. Probably one of the biggest highlights to the game. One of the coolest things I've seen in a long time, actually, is when the music starts up as soon as the game starts, through all the producer logos and everything. There are uh, quite a few classic tracks in there, as well as some newer tracks that are just really addictive. However, the inability to actually choose what tracks you want to hear is a downer. Beyond the amazing music selection, the pretty damn good graphics upgrade, and the amusing online, the game does have a few glitches. You may find yourself being thrown from a bale through a wall and getting stuck, and in rare cases experienced by yours truly, you may find that while assigning your different tricks, you lose the ability to assign anything, and you're rendered without any tricks at that button combo. A glitch that has yet to be fixed, and has rendered one of my characters completely useless without a single grab trick being able to be assigned and used in the game. Nonetheless, the game brings enough to the table for 15 bucks to consider buying. If you're a fan of any of the Tony Hawk games, you'll find comfort in playing this one, and if you're looking for a new game to pick up, you can find yourself a decent, satisfying challenge. All in all, I give this game an 8 out of 10. A lot of the issues are merely a Robomoto recreating the classic feel of Tony Hawk, and the online will keep you playing for a while if you can master those crazy lines.